everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio, and today I'm sharing with you days five, six, and seven of the Artist Trading Card a Day Challenge going on over in the Art Joy of Sharing Facebook group. This is a month-long challenge doing an Artist Trading Card every day in the month of June 2022. And also, our theme for this month is textures, um, doing your art on something other than just a you know, your average smooth paper or canvas, but um, trying some other textures. So uh, for this one, which is number five, the texture was newspaper. And I had a really old, brittle newspaper scrap that someone had sent me, is, um, you know, really uh, discolored from the acid and very brittle. And I glued it down onto a Bristol card and then I wanted to seal it and kind of edge the re uh, age the rest of the, the card that I'd glued it onto. So I used some fluid matte medium and then also uh, added a little drop of burnt umber color um, fluid acrylic into it. And there was a little, it was an ad, and there was this little picture on there and I was reading it and it was, it appeared to be some type of an accessory box that had a collapsible um, cup, some pencils, uh, pencil sharpener. I don't know. I'm not sure what it was. But anyway, I decided that I really couldn't, couldn't think of anything to work with that. So I had this little snip of a thermal printed picture of my dog Mika. I have... A little tiny uh, kind of like a label printer that that prints I I will up in the iCard I'll link the video of when I got it and uh, it can print out the pictures from your phone as well and so it's, it's just a little picture of my dog <laughs> and it's just been laying around in the scrap pile you know we've been talking about using up stuff that's that's just around you and so I decided to put that on there still allowing some of the the text and stuff show show from around the background from that piece of newspaper, but then um, covering up that picture of that whatever it was <laughs> thing kit something I don't know um, that someone must have wanted to buy at some point I I don't really understand it but I did that I glued it down with some Yuhu glue stick and then I used some um, Neo Color 2 water soluble crayon to add a little bit of color to Mika. She's a she's got a yellow golden color. Um, from what the vet says, she's a palm chi, which be a, a mixture between a Pomeranian and a Chihuahua. She kind of looks like a Chihuahua. She's furrier though around the neck. And so, you know, without getting the dog DNA thing or whatever, which we're not gonna do. That's just what she is. She's a bomb G. <laughs> so she's kind of gold color. I, I added some color. Then I also found this page of stamped tissue that had different things on it. And I decided to use some of those. A little uh, fake postage stamp. And I also had some napkin, some leftover napkin that had, it was kind of a blue color. I had found this thing that, this wor printed word that said love. And so I wanted to add in a little bit of the blue color. So I used some of that other napkin and the little post-it thing. And then I add another one, another postage thing down here at the bottom. But right now I'm adding some darker yellow in the shadowy areas. I don't want to heat set this. And the reason that I don't is because that label material that you can print out your pictures with is is reactive to heat. That's how it how it makes the print is it heats up the paper. So if I was to heat this to get you know as I'm going to speed up the process of it drying or whatever I would I would ruin the picture. So you got to think about that. I brought in a little bit of pink. I brought in a little bit of blue onto her collar and tag even though that's not the color of it. Obviously the little printed picture was uh, black and white. And um, some pinkish, peachy colors just to fill things in. Some red for that postage stamp that has a heart in the middle. 
and I'm just doing a little, little collagey bits and color bits and calling it good. So um, that's number, what did I say, five, I think. I'm working ahead a little bit because I'm going to have guests and they're going to stay in my studio. So I need to work ahead. But there will be an ATC for every day. It's just some of them might not have been made on the day <laughs> that they were presented to you. So there was these lines, and I thought I needed to emphasize some of these lines and connect them to make them make kind of an offset frame. So I used a Posca pin for that and a little ruler just because it added a little bit of linear interest into the background. And then I set that thing aside to dry. I did put some ink around the edges to make the edges darker. And that is ATC number five newspaper. So now we're moving on to number six. I'm looking on my, my flyer. You can print out that flyer. If you go to, well, I'll just, I'll just put a link under the video here. Um, if you're in the group, obviously you can get it easily. If you're not in the Art Joy of Sharing Art Community group on Facebook because you don't Facebook or whatever, then uh, it's a little bit harder to get, but you can still participate. Just post your the pictures of whatever you make during the challenge on any social media using the hashtag AJOSATCAday2022 and we'll find you. It puts them in little categories. So the next, the next one, the next surface challenge was wood. And I had this piece of wood that is like one of those things you buy at Michael's or something. It has two holes drilled in it. It was not quite three and a half by two and a half. So I mounted it onto a piece of heavier stock and um, so that I could make it the correct size that an ATC is two and a half by three and a half. And I wanted to stain it. I didn't want to paint over it because then, you know, you'd kind of lose the idea that it's wood and why do wood if you're not going to make it look like wood. But I did want to add color. So I decided to use distress ink and water and um, color and then kind of spritz and wipe back and press the color down into the wood so that it looked a little bit like a stained piece of wood. Because, you know, stained wood, it always still has wood grain in it, even though it's a color. Then I needed to touch up the edges of uh, the wood because it looked weird being light on the side and then colored on the top. So I used a pin and just went around the edges and touched it up. So now the whole thing has a black frame, which I like. And then I thought, what should I put on it? I should put... A, an animal that lives in a tree or in wood or eats wood or whatever. And I found um, this set of ATC stencils from Stencil Girl and I will tell you who designed it. I don't know, but they're all little animals. And, you know, I love animals. I draw animals in my art all the time. And so I purchased these. And as you can see from the stencils, they've never even been used. I just cut them up, put them on a ring and that's it. So I thought this guy kind of looked like either a chipmunk or a woodchuck. I decided it was a woodchuck because this is a wood challenge and a woodchuck could chuck wood. I don't have any idea what that means. I assume that they maybe chew on or eat wood like a beaver does. I've been, I've experienced beavers um, and the, they, they use wood and they dam up, you know, creeks and stuff and, make themselves areas and habitats by by chewing on wood and bringing it to create habitats. So I assume a woodchuck is something like that. I'm not going to do the research, but if you know what a woodchuck is or why it's called that, um, to me it just looks like a cute little rodent with a little rodent face and they're kind of fat and they're kind of rusty colored and I had already added that um, rusty colored ink in the background. So I decided it's a woodchuck. It may not be. I'm not sure. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying and I'm sticking to it. So I used the stencil to draw and I just used a, a pigment type 
brush pin to draw around. And then now I'm filling in if there's any areas that I think need to be connected because of the little tabs that keep the stencil together. There might be areas that needed to be connected. I did need to draw an extra line around the back ear because of the way the stencil was. I didn't want those uh, other lines that were on the stencil, so I taped them off so that I would just get the kind of uh, three-quarter profile of this little creature. So um, once I was done filling in what I thought I needed to with white, then I came back with the ink pads, and these are the tiny ink pads, so I can kind of use them to color. So I just used the uh, rusty colored one to color a bit of the animal. I used some of the pinkish colored ink, and don't ask me which colors these are. Rusty nail, maybe, and maybe something about orchid. I don't know, anyway, I used a pinkish one. And I spritzed it again and um, pounced it back with my my ta my uh, baby wipe. And then I, I dried it. So now you're getting the idea of this this little creature on a wood panel. So then I needed to lighten up some areas, so I put some acrylic ink from a pen. I was too lazy to get out acrylic paint, so I just grabbed a Posca pen, put some a puddle of the ink onto my uh, palette paper, and picked it up with a water brush and added, you know, let it soak into the wood so that it kind of lightens a few areas to give a little bit of more contrast. I think that the animal has a white chest, rusty back, white chest, you know, that kind of situation. And then I also used the pin straight to the wood to just add some like really bright highlights here and there. So I have these two holes that were drilled in this thing with, I think with the idea that you would put a ribbon or wood, uh, wire through it and hang it, but I didn't want to do that. So I grabbed some mini brads and I cut the ends, the, you know, pokey parts off because an ATC doesn't usually have something that's sticking out of it because generally people collect them and they put them in a sleeve or something. So I didn't want anything poking out. So I just glued the two little mini brads right into the holes to cover up those weird little holes. So now it looks like it's tacked to something, kind of. Like, I almost thought about putting the word wanted on there, like this is a, a creature that um, has been doing some damage and, you know, they're trying to hunt him down or whatever, but I don't, I don't believe in that. So I just put a little Tim Holtz sticker on there, be you bravely, and that's number six out of our 30 days of ATCs. So let's move on to number seven. Number seven texture is heavy gesso. And so I used a piece of watercolor stock, cut to the right size, put some heavy gesso, white gesso on there. And then I used some, some tools to drag through it and texture and give it just a lot of texture. It's very bumpy and um, that's what the challenge is for day seven. So I started out with acrylic paint in a dialeride yellow and a little bit of white gesso, and I painted some of that on, dried it, um, tried to get it down into the creases and crevices. Then I put on some high flow golden naphthol red and let it drip through and put some water on it to let it drip. And then I added some transparent brown and did the same thing. So I'm trying to highlight the texture by letting things run over and drip into the, the crevices. And then I thought I wanted some copper and I have this new product that I hadn't really tried yet. And it's a wax. It's a fluid wax that becomes shiny when you heat it. It's a, a distress Tim Holtz type product. So I put the copper on there I heated it. It didn't really like turn shiny like I expected. Um, I thought maybe I didn't make it thick enough because I put it on with my finger. And so then I decided to make a puddle. Um, the one that I'm using is called Mind, which, you know, like Mind 
I think these things are called forged metal or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, I have all, f all four colors of it. Not as shiny as I wanted. It just wouldn't become shiny. So I was getting annoyed and I decided to maybe push back some of the color back to the, the yellow because it was getting too dark. So I added back in some diorelluride yellow and white gesso uh, with a brush to try to get some of the light back because everything was just making it so dark. And uh, yeah, not in love. So <laughs> I put some more naphthol red on there, which completely took over the whole thing. Um, blood red, you know, it's really not actually, it's too orange for blood, but uh, yeah, it's looking like a crime scene on my desk. <laughs> but uh, I have lightened it up again a little bit and like why isn't that copper stuff turning like a puddle of metal like melted metal so I decided to add some collage because when all else fails you just add collage right that's what I do I don't like it I glue some paper over it so I grab some scraps um, I use this black piece to kind of add some design and interest to it because it was just blah. But of course, this piece is super textured. So I'm going to need to really press that paper down into the texture. <coughs> Excuse me. I decided to use gloss gel, soft gloss gel, because I had that metal stuff on there and I didn't want to dull it down even though it was already pretty dull with uh, you know a matte medium so this is a gloss gel and I'm using the end of my brush to press down and try to really make that paper malleable get it down into the cracks I also use a paper towel for that too or a baby wipe I'm not sure at this point and I like that the design looks better now because it's got something something breaking up all that color. So then I switched colors and I put on some gilded, which is, I think, the brass color one. And I kind of got the same results. It didn't really shine. So I just kept putting on more until I felt like it had a bit of a shine to it. I think you really need it to be in a puddle. I'm not sure. I need to, to mess with it more. Maybe it's because it was over the gesso. I don't know. It just kept bubbling and yeah, that was not, not what I was expecting. Not what I've seen it do when other people demonstrate it. So yeah, whatever. It turned out fine. I found a word that said treasure and this does kind of look like um, where you'd mine for gold and you'd dig down into the, the caves and you'd find, you know, the shiny metal to dig out. So that's what I went with. And that is number seven. I hope you've enjoyed these. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question. Subscribe. Join our challenge. That's it for me. Bye-bye. <laughs>